Okay, let's give you a quick summary of what we've done so far. So we started out with a cosine rule, and it was blah blah blah. That then led us to this. So what it's saying is that um, uh, oh, if you get if you times this to both sides, that will then lead us to this. And what it's saying here is that um, this dot product here. Remember, this thing here is a dot product. Uh, it's saying that uh, there's a connection between between uh, the dot product and the magnitude of one vector, the magnitude of the other vector and the cosine of the angle that exists between the two vectors. Well, there, there, there's a connection between the dot product and these three blocks, and these three blocks. So, so if you want to know the angle, we can use the dot product and work backwards to find the angle. Work backwards to find the angle that exists between the two vectors. So by, so, so by looking at the dot product, we can then work backwards to find the angle, to find the angle. And we've already seen this. And then we moved on to um, on to pulling a box uh, up an incline, up a frictionless incline with a force, with a force vector of f, with a force vector of f. But as far as the box is concerned, it only cares. It doesn't care about this force here. As far as the box is concerned, it only cares about the force in this given direction. So we would project, we would project the vector f onto onto u onto you. So so if, if you look at this right angle triangle here, it's back to basic trigonometry. Uh, it's, it's back to hang on. It's back to basic trigonometry. So if you have um, f here, vector f, angle of theta, if you want to know this this length it would be a magnitude of f uh, times cosine of the angle here of the angle here. So that's that's this length here. That's this length here. That's this length here, but then because we we are working 3D space, we need to uh, we need to take direction into account. We need to take the direction of u into account. So imagine this is your your x y axis x y axis. Um, if you want if you want this direction, then you would get the vector itself divided by its magnitude divided by let's say the magnitude here. Let's just say it's three one. So it's so it's one. Two, three. If you get the vector divided by three, then you're going to get a unit vector in in that given in this given direction. So basically, this is your unit vector. Uh, and remember, unit vector is has a magnitude of one. So you can think of a unit uh, vector as being just a direction. So this thing here is just a direction. This thing here is a magnitude. So when you get the magnitude times the direction, it, it then gives you um, it then gives you this vector. So, so this has a, the correct, the correct uh, magnitude, and it has the correct direction. So, uh, so we would project f onto u, and it's given by blah blah by this. Okay, uh, because because when you're here, you can imagine this as being. Uh, uh, we, we've done this before. Uh, imagine this as being u here, and then there's another. Well, then it's going to be the magnitude of u squared. Um, well, think about it. From here, we've done this, so that will then take you to here. So projecting f onto u is given by by this, okay? And then we moved on to um, to uh, to this. If you have three vectors, one, two, three vectors. If you um, uh, so so this is one vector here, the vector of a, the vector of b, the vector of c. If you mindlessly compute the determinant, that will then give you the volume that will then give you the volume, and and the determinant could be could be a positive number, could be a negative. But when it comes to the volume, if you want to know the volume, then just extract the positive version. So ignore the negative. Um, so so this is with three vectors: one, two, three vectors. But then uh, but then we moved on to this. So rather than having your your first rather than having your first row there, if you insert. If you insert insert i j k hat, um, and then and then this being your your vector here, so now you've only got two vectors, um, two vectors here. One, two. This is your second vector. If you compute the the the, the cross product here, so this is very similar to to the determinant above. Um, so it would be you looking at i, you looking at i. Discard these two. Discard these two. Look at this. So that will then give you this. And then the next step would be discard these, and then just look at these four. Just look at these four. 
and then the third one discard discard and then just look at this just look at this um well the, the the difference here the difference is that here you have three vectors you have three three vectors one two three but down here down here you've only got two vectors so this so down here you've only got two vectors one two one two but then if if you insert this ijk and then compute this it will then give you it would then by you performing the cross product it will then give you this whole thing here will then be this vector here and the magnitude of this vector so if you want to know the magnitude then then in a way you're using pythagoras to work out the magnitude if you work out the magnitude of of this um, of this vector the magnitude of this vector equals the area of this parallelogram okay so and and, and this vector here is always perpendicular to uh, to these two vectors okay and, and we've done all of this it's just me zooming through this to to remind you okay